companions on the quest for eternity. Come with me on a journey through time passing to find time eternal from whence your being has emanated. Rise with me now from your earthly body. You feel light, longing, happy for the 24 hours are yours and the cycle of the year is yours and the cycle of the galaxy is yours journey now with me who have come into your time back in time with me you seem to see time rushing by in reverse as you rise into the sky and you are back at the time of the winter solstice in at Clodigal Castle in the land of Ireland. You pass over England and the mighty temple of time at Stonehenge and that at Avery. You pass New Grange and all the mighty tumuli and monoliths of thousands of years ago. But now, in your etheric body, you see they are illuminated with an unearthly light. And you appear to hear the sound of the beating of time. Now, however, in the southeast part of Ireland, between two shining rivers, you see another light. It seems brighter, more radiant, as if it has newly been lighted like a beacon. You see a coil of light, like a spiral, and it weaves its way into a helix pattern. So there are two centers of light. We descend into the first one, which has a deep green glow, deep green and orange of the earth. We see an ancient grey stone castle with a straight avenue marked by mighty lime trees at regular intervals. And round it is a garden, but the garden is laid out in a strange way of ancient pattern, of yew trees 600 years old, and avenues and trees all laid out at right angles like a chessboard. You sink down and you come into a holy temple of the goddess of time and all being. Isis the winged one, daughter of the spiral galaxy knew it. You find a stately pr procession of the priesthood around a holy well who are having their brows anointed by a priestess. You observe that the priesthood are wearing black and white garments and black and white headdresses. The priestess is wearing silver
Each time the priestess makes a circle on the brow, she says, May you travel in time passing into time eternal. Feel this water now given by me to you hysterically. surrounded by ancient trees and old stone fortress and a holy well and they are carrying water and earth and a vessel of incense outside the temple to a pillared portico they wind their way with serious intent under the wheeling dome of the stars of the winter sun Above is the pole star, centre of the clock, and round it is the swastika, the smaller pole star, and the great bear in his measured tread, and Cassiopeia, all the wheeling constellations are circling, and we are aware of their mighty circling. 26,000 years of an equinoctial year and our own galaxy, the body of Newt is spinning around the center of the mega galaxy. But now the stars are hidden as the procession proceed down the U walk. At the end of the U walk, they make their procession slowly, up a slight incline, up a hill, marked by trees planted at regular intervals. And now we find we are entering the element of air and of light. We are rising and on our left spreads out a valley in the dim evening and we discern the dignified shape and violet of the sacred Mount Leinster, pre-Diluvian granite smooth, with, tre with beautiful trees on either side, and hills. And now we come to a concealed place, and we realize this is the other helix, where as we left the temple widow shins, moving from right to left, now we begin to encircle a mighty building, 80 feet by 80 feet, on the path of the sun. And as we do so, still the priesthood beat gongs of time. Circle outside this white and silver building. 
And then they enter a small door at the Sasi. They enter this door and they come into a temple of time. The procession weaves their way round four mighty granite doorways at the north and at the east and at the south and at the west. And they slowly coil the path of the sun round some more mighty stones, eight tabula flat upon the ground of slate. Then they make a smaller circle around eight standing stones and all the stones to the inner eye glow with a mysterious light. We look up and we see the dome of the temple is the sky and we can discern the polar star hub of where we are. Star. However, the procession having made its circle in the center, now turn to the north, due north, and they make their way towards it. What appears to be a statue is seated there, a stately figure of a woman with bare feet and a long black veil enshrouding her. The priest approaches her and makes invocation that the oracle may be granted to us. This splendid lady meets Goddess of the starry bolt, goddess of magic, give us thy oracle. Thou who art worshipped in Atlantis and in the two lands of Kem, there I am all that was, that is. That shall be. Now may there lift my veil and live. Therefore, <coughs> with thine own hand, lift thy veil for us, who adore thee as the white light of the truth. So knowing all time, we may more physically serve thy divine purpose. We wait in all to see if we are to be granted the oracle this time of the winter solstice. Then slowly white women, woman's hands come forth from the enshrouding veil. And slowly she lifts the veil from her face and throws it back. And we see a priestess in deep trance. Her eyelids flicker. She speaks. Do not bargain with the deities. You cannot deceive truth, but rather your own self. Be honest. You know not why you seek occult knowledge, but seek it you must with an unquenchable longing. <laughs> you serve my divine purpose in any case whether you do ill or well. For if you do ill, the deities transform the ill to good. And if you do well, 
it is the same for the purpose, but pleasanter for yourself. It is usual for humans to pursue love with pride and to treat truth with humility. For love shows so lovely a face that all fly into her arms. Yet to do so is to cause destruction from consuming passion. But truth is believed to be so hideous that she is seen as a gorgon's head entwined with venomous serpents and so must be avoided at all costs. It is regarded as safer to prostrate before the veiled goddess rather than to lift her veil. Hmm. Many fear the fate of Oedipus, who gave the factual answer to the Sphinx's riddle, not knowing the true meaning, and so perished from his own ignorance. I'm amused that you should ask me to lift my veil, and because I'm entertained, I have done so, according to your true need, but not for the satisfaction of your curiosity, which you dignify with the name of science. For wit is my prerogative, and humour is my sort. <laughs> the shock when I lift my veil often brings laughter more than the tears induced by love. <laughs> and you fear laughter when it is directed against yourself. It is to be reduced to your relevant size, your true degree. And this in one second kills self-deluding dreams of your importance in relation to others, your high stature that diminishes your rivals. However, do not fear, though there is much to be feared. Only fear self-deception. For in reality, truth bears the most beautiful face of all the deities. When you gaze into my mirror, you first see the Gorgon's head of your follies. But through this mask, you will, with the eye of discernment, see your own immortal beauty. And so you will also see the immortal beauty hidden in all beings. The goddess has spoken. The priestess, once more, veils her face. Now, all the company make their way to the center of this strange place where there is a fire burning. By it is a central altar draped in black cloth. Upon it are three lighted lamps, three oil lamps of ancient appearance. The priesthood put the burning incense upon this and a vessel of water is placed on it and the other vessels of water placed around it. Now we see on it with some surprise a large ancient sand hourglass and a pendulum. There is a spindle of wound thread nearby and a large Tibetan gong and a pitcher of water. The priesthood move with silent dignity to the sound of the gongs to the place of the zodiac. They form the ancient zodiac starting as Aquarius around so that Aries and Pisces are formed by the eastern gateway 
and by the southern gateway, priest and priestess in turn form the gateway of these mighty granite stones. At the southern gateway, we see Gemini and Cancer. The priesthood wear their lamen about their necks, marked to the zodiac sign. You see the other priesthood moving to the place of the west. Here is Virgo. Maybe you'll recognize your own sun sign. You'll feel it in the west. There's earth in the west in Georgia. Earth. Virgo. Libra. Now we come to the place of the law where the priest death is slowly recovering from trial. When she's recovered, she will join us. And by her, the Sagittarius and Capricorn. The others range themselves under their own sun sign. Now, the other of the priesthood form an inner circle of the eight sacred signs the seven sacred planets representing the seven rays and the eight which always represent the higher octave of the first so no circle is a total seal there is always a way out now we watch and realize that a dawn is about to begin the first enchanter speaks let the cosmic clock strike twelve as the old era dies giving birth to the new dispensation <laughs> Atlantis. 
bring us knowledge from the depths of past ages. In the house of Sagittarius I invoke Saturn. Thy golden age came first, which without any avenger, or the constraint of law, or of its own accord, practiced faith and justice. Fear and punishment were yet unknown. Nations, peaceable and secure, lived in lofty tranquility. Men were contented with the food which Mother Nature freely gave, gathered the fruit of the strawberry bush and the wildlings growing on mountains, and the acorns that fell from the spreading oak of Jove. The earth, unplowed, yielded crops of white grain. Now has come the last age of the song of Kumai, of Sibyl. Now the virgin returns. Now a new generation descends from heaven on high. The second priest is given the sickle from the first priest and holds it aloft. And a priest's death takes it from him and speaks. In the house of Scorpio, in the north, I invoke Selkin. Not enough to buy goddess is it for us to drink of memories sad. With the bite of thy fiery scorpion, we would awake thy inner flame of life. May we live again the past, so that it becomes the present. So we, thy children, shall know our immortality. In the house of Libra, I invoke Janus. As we stand upon the threshold of past and future, we invoke the watcher on the threshold. Janus, who with thy two faces look upon the past and upon that which is to be, give us the wisdom to choose wisely. In the house of Virgo, I invoke Parati Kali, twofold goddess who art mistress of time. Thou art ruler of those ages, Pakali, of the vanishing yuga, give us birth to Parati, beautiful goddess of compassion. Now, the other magus receives the sickle, as the sickle is moved around each companion, crosses towards each side of the zodiac. In the house of Leo in the west, I invoke Kronos, they are consort of Rhea, who with her art ruled the Titans. Bring us the wisdom of the cycles, for that which was shall be, and the future is shaped from the past. Through understanding may we transform knowledge into wisdom. In the house of Cancer I invoke Meath, goddess of Atlantis. We dare not have the impiety to lift thy veil. Of thy grace lift it for us, if this be our destiny. In the house of Gemini I invoke the goddess Pytho, holy Python goddess, who through thy Pythoness gave prophecies at Delphi. Bring us thy life through thy snake's bite, that we may learn to enjoy our future lives even as we dwell in the present. For this is life eternal, to experience past, present and future as one whole. How beautiful is this, to see each zodiac sign hand on the sickle to another as in some mystical dance of the movement of time. Now the a priestess invoked. In the house of Taurus, in the south, I invoke Phoebus Apollo. It is not enough to live and enjoy. We need to know. Bright son of Hela, bring us the art of withdrawing from passing time, so that, safe upon the hub of the wheel, we may watch the passing ages, and like thee, know our eternal self. So may we escape the fate of Cassandra, who had knowledge, was put trapped by Nemesis. Bring us the calm of the immortal. At this tenth hour, before the coming of a prayer of justice of the new age in the house of Aries, the companions are seated and meditate upon their future.
Companions, we are seated in the temple of time at the tenth hour, meditating on our future, on the coming of a stray of justice long prophesied. Once more, the companions stand to their feet, and she who standeth at the house of Ares speaketh. In the house of Ares I invoke Astraea, her men call justice. Of old she dwelt upon the earth, nor ever disdained in olden time the tribes of men and women, but mingling with them took her seat, immortal though she was. She uttered her voice, ever urging judgments kinder to the people. Justice herself, queen of the peoples, giver of things just, abundantly supplied every need. Ever so long as the earth still nurtured the golden race, she had her dwelling on earth. She left the earth when men forged weapons for fateful strife, and ate the patient ox. Only do thou now, Astraea, pure Lucina, smile on the birth of the child, under whom the iron brood shall cease, and the new golden race spring up throughout the world. The priest now solemnly takes the sickle at the place of Pisces. In the house of Pisces I invoke Brahma, the mighty Kalpas of Brahma that hold millions of years fill us with awe and reverence. Too great are such eons for human mind to encompass. So do we turn to his consort, the goddess Sarasvati, who brings the greatest eon in harmony with the shortest heartbeat through her divine music. To her, the life of a gnat is as precious as the deity. So, we may all join in her song of creation. The dance now speeds up. It was in slow motion as the sickle was brought from each side of the zodiac. Three enchantresses, lightly touching fingertips, circle around the altar, widow shins. The Magi dance left to right, Dacial around the second circle, and the outer circle moves the other way, Widdershins. We notice they form a strange four beat movements with their feet. Join in, join in the dance to the music of time. Even the deities obey the fates, under whose aegis all beings live their allotted span of many existences. The three norms spin past, present and future as they sit beneath the ash tree Yggdrasil. Let us offer reverence to the norms. The 
Please stay and speak. The norms may not be invoked, for their holiness is beyond the manifest. Veneration alone is necessary to receive their aid. Reverently, the three priestesses light the three oil lamps that look like the ancient lights of Aladdin. May the words of the philosopher Plato be given that we may duly honour the faith. At equal distances sit three figures, each on a throne. These are the three fates, daughters of necessity, Dachithis, Clotho, and Atropos. Their robes are white, their heads are garlanded, and they sing to the music of the sirens. Dachithis sings of things past, Clotho of things present, Atropos of things to come. And Clotho from time to time takes hold of the outermost rim of the spindle and helps to turn it. In the same way, Atropos turns the inner rims with her left hand, while Achesis takes inner and outer rims with her left and right hand alternately. Now we understand the meaning of the dance we have seen. The three enchantresses follow with their hand movements with spindle, handing it to each other. The priest speaks. On their arrival in the left next life, souls go before Achesis and they are told, this is the world of Lachesis. Souls of a day, here you must begin another round of mortal life. No guardian angel will be allotted to you. You must choose your own. Goodness knows no master. A man shall have more or less of her, the angel, according to the value he sets on her. Thoughts line not with the deities, but with the soul that makes the choice. And when all souls make their choice, they are led to Clotho, who presents them with their lot in the new life. And after saluting her, they are led to Atrophos, who by spinning made the threads of their, each their destiny irreversible. As these words are spoken, the companions pass before the enchantresses in turn and touch the spindle of fate. Know that each soul drinks of the waters of Leith so that all memory is lost of life before earthly existence. But now we do not drink of this water. Rather do we pray the fates that we may be granted memories of where we have come from and of our former lives. May the, may the knell of the dark half of the cycle be sounded. incense bring you memory of the hidden past. Companions, be seated in a circle, each in your place on the perimeter of the starry clock. Behold the movement of time. Here she holds up a swinging pendulum before the company. It moves slowly. Close your eyes, feel yourselves moving backwards. You sink into a waking sleep. You hear the faint sound of a gong and you know it is your heartbeats. These grow slower and slower. The pendulum swings slower and slower. Backwards through time you become a child, an infant. You look upon your infant body you see an ancient silver mirror, spotted and old. It is veiled with dust. 
you look into it and enter it and in silence make your way on your appointed path knowing that when you will return you will be called by the voice of the enchantress as the enchantress speaks these magical words the company sink upon the ground sink you also upon the ground and looking at the pendulum growing slower and slower, you too travel back in time into the past. will be your past, even in five minutes. You dance to the music of the time, of the hour, of the sons and daughters, of the fates. And you begin to realize that you are not in the outer circle, slowly moving, nor in the middle circle, nor in the centre circle, at centre, and at centre, you command the three, and the seven, and the eight, and the twelve, For you are one with me. Hear the voice of the Enchantress. It is now time to return from the past through the mirror of the present. Pass through the mirror and return to the temple from whence you stepped forth, bringing with you your harvest of experience. slowly return from past and each has had an experience personal to them alone and yet they begin to realize that their lives are interwoven with all the other companions they met each other in past lives and some have had glimpses of the future for the future is there we may mar it distort it but the fates will turn it to good it is only we who suffer when we do ill we cannot destroy their divine web We pray the fates that we may be granted visions of things to come. May the knell of the bright half of the cycle be sounded.
another priestess, not aged as the first, but very young and shy, comes forward. And she takes the basin of water and anoints and sprinkles each head of the companion. And she said, May this water bring you visions of things to come. Now she holds up the swinging pendulum, but unlike the other priestess, instead of doing it slowly, she swings it with increasing speed. Behold the movement of time. Shut your eyes. Sink onto the ground. Feel yourself moving forward, forward, forward into the future. You sink into a waking sleep. You hear the faint sound of a gong and you know it is your heart beat. These grow faster and faster. The pendulum swings quicker and quicker. Forward through time, you become old, you are dying. You look down upon your dying body. You rise above it. Above you is a particular constellation. Your star hole. You gaze upon it and mark its form and the color of the star. You enter into it. And in silence, you make your way on your appointed path, knowing that you will return when you are called by the voice of the Enchantress. in a crystal, through clouds, you experience the shape of things to come. But this is far harder, for what is to come are dreams unfolding, dreams of beauty, dreams of greatness, dreams of wonder. For know that though the greater comprehends the lesser, the lesser cannot comprehend the greater. So we, humble pilgrims, children caught in the trap of time and space, may only occasionally catch a glimpse of the wonder, the glory, the greatness, the gentleness, the joy, 
and compassion of the blessed deity and the wonders they hold for us. Our future, yet our future will contain our present and all our past lives and existences, whether as human or animal or reptile or fish or high-flying bird or stately tree or humble plant or cloth of earth or atom. All is part of what we are and we are all part of the deities. Here's the voice of the enchanter. It is now time to return from the future through your own constellation. Return to the temple from whence you stepped forth bringing with you visions of things to come. And, and the pre some priestesses and priests give forth what they have visualized in the creation of imagination of the future. I speak of a world made perfect, individual, in each its part, where tears and laughter mingle, forming a tapestry of beauty, where strength and compassion are in harmony, where every hope is made true, and none are rejected, for all that is evil is unreal, a nightmare experienced by children who, who as they become older turn nightmare into dream and dream into creativity and creativity into planets and so with the deities to the measure of time and space they create new worlds from eternal reality where all time is enclosed and liveth. We are children of the immortal deities whose attributes are love, beauty and truth. The priest then speaks of his hopes for the future. May all beings become as one and pass on to the next stage, whatever that may be. Please death speaks her hope for the future. May we all live in peace and harmony and become one with the deity. Another priest speaks of his hope. May balance be obtained between dark and light, so that light get shadowed by the dark and dark becomes lit by the light. And the priest speaks of his hope for the future. Peace and harmony among all of you. May peace and harmony be among all beings. And the youngest priestess speak. We are children of the immortal deities whose attributes are love, beauty and truth. Let us send forth good to all beings. At this point the whole company form a mighty star as they are in their appointed places of sun, moon and earth, of planets and of constellations and they send forth their arms and hands uplifted in blessing to all beings. Join with us 
send forth your own love and healing and blessing to all personal, impersonal, great and small, rainforest and a child, a dog, a cat. As we send forth a blessing, we begin to see a mist falling upon the company. It is the darkness of the winter solstice, or is it something else? We hear now, as at a distance, the priesthood giving thanks to Leaf, and the blessed star deities, and the blessed planetary beings. And we see the procession moves now, widdershins, round the temple of time, three times, and then four outside the temple. But we see this as we slowly rise into the sky, amidst the polar constellation. We look down, and we see that the priesthood are forming another circle, this time sunrise through the temple of Isis, of earth and water, and they bring with them the lamps, the lamps of light, of the sun and air, to the temple of earth and water, and the two are one, forming a mighty helix. And they move down, round the walk into the and we are rising and gaze once more at the zodiacal clock encircling the pole star and now we feel the pole stars within ourselves we are centered we are in control of our many lives for we are in eternity friend do you notice something you're not in my time this is past for you you had better come into your own time in the future. You are back in your own home, in your own body. Drink a glass of water and go, go into traffic for half an hour, but meditate. I am Olivia Robertson of the Fellowship of Isis, Clonigal Castle, Enniscorthy, Southern Ireland. Write to us any time. Those taking part were my brother, Lawrence Sturden Robertson, Caroline Wise, Steve Wilson and John Merrill, all of the priesthood of the Lyceum of, guess what, Isis of Time and Space. You might like to know sources. You could read The Republic of Plato, Penguin Books, Metamorphoses, Ovid, our edition is London, 1759, Callimachus, Lycophron, Aratus, Harvard, Heinemann, Eclogues, Georgics, Aeneid, Virgil, Hesiod, published by Heinemann, Dictionary of Phase and Fable, the Reverend Dr. Brewer Castle. Do read the ancient text, thou spot. Hail and farewell. Ave, salve, vale.